In this lecture, I'll talk about the risks associated with investing in bonds. Now, in the CFA scheme of things, this is the second reading in fixed income securities, which I think is a little harsh because after just doing one reading, it will be difficult to understand all the concepts covered in this reading. So, if you get to the end of this lecture and things don't make complete sense, I can understand your situation. What I would then suggest is uh, that you listen to the rest of the fixed income securities lectures and then come back and hear this again. And I'm sure that when you hear this the second time, things will make a lot more sense. Nevertheless, I will give it my best shot to explain things as well as I can. Okay, so what are the different risks? And as you can see from this long list, there are several possible risks that you are exposed to when you invest in fixed income securities. And, uh, and in this lecture, I'm going to talk about all these risks. First, and perhaps one of the most important risks that you need to worry about is interest rate risk and we will talk about this in a very simple way i'll just tell you what interest rate risk is first and then draw draw it out basically as you have probably figured out by now when interest rates go up the price of a fixed income security comes down because the present value of future cash flows goes down so if you hold a debt security then you worry about interest rates going up and that worry or that risk of interest rates going up is called interest rate risk the way you can look at it graphically is let's look at a price yield curve for either a bond or a bond portfolio so we have price of the bond portfolio on the y-axis yield on the x-axis and there is a negative relationship which you should be very familiar with so as the yield or interest rates go up the price of the bond comes down so if you let's say hold a bond which has a par value of uh, let's say par value of 100 and let's say the coupon rate is 8% so at a yield of 8% the bond will trade at par now if interest rates go up then the price of the bond will come down because as i said earlier the present value of the future cash flows will be less than 100 on the other hand if yield goes down then the price of the bond will go up because the present value of the future cash flows will be more than 100 obviously what i'm assuming here is a uh, fixed coupon rate of 8% so floating rate securities I'll talk about later but this is a, a regular option free straight bond with, um, with, fixed, with a fixed coupon rate this y axis intercept represents the sum of all the undiscounted cash flows because at a yield of 0 the value of the bond or the price of the bond will simply be the sum of all the coupon payments plus the par value there is a segment later uh, actually a, a later reading which is focused on measuring interest rate risk and there we talk about interest rate risk in a lot more detail but essentially just as a quick recap interest rate risk can be thought of at any given point of time as the slope of the price yield curve because let's say if we take this point this slope represents uh, the change in price for a given change in yield so anyway that's the interest rate risk for a option free bond now if you have a callable bond remember a callable bond is one which can be called by the issuer so let's take the similar bond but say that now it is callable at hundred and two dollars so a call value of 102 puts a limit uh, upper limit or a roof or a ceiling on the on the value of the bond because nobody is going to sell this bond for more than 102 
because uh, or actually nobody is going to buy this for more than 102 because the bond can be called for 102 so if I just uh, draw the original price yield again so I'll put that as a dotted line so this is the price yield assuming that the bond is not callable but if we put a call price of 102 so we now say that the bond is callable at 102 then the risk of being called becomes high when yields are low and we also know that the maximum price cannot go above 102 so we put this point over here at very high yields the bond is not likely to be called so the price of a, of a bond at high yields uh, so the price of a callable bond at high yields will be equal to the price of a non-callable bond so we have this segment over here and overall then the price yield curve for a callable bond looks like roughly like this notice now the interest rate risk or the slope of this this price yield curve which is the price yield curve for a callable bond is generally less than the slope of a non-callable bond so we can say and, and let me just highlight this in a little more detail let's say that you are at an interest rate here of 7% so when you go from an interest rate of 7% to say 8% the change in price of the bond is very little so just this is the change in price versus if you have a similar change for a non-callable bond on the left the change in price is more substantial so we can then say that the interest rate risk for a callable bond is less than the interest rate risk for a option free bond next let's talk about factors which affect interest rate risk and uh, from an exam perspective these are very important you need to simply memorize these but understanding the intuition is obviously helpful clearly bonds with longer maturity have a higher interest rate risk so the higher the maturity of a bond the higher the interest rate risk the way you can see that is through a very simple example let's say you have bond A with maturity equal to 10 years and bond B with maturity equal to one year and to make this uh, explicit let's say these are both zero coupon bonds so two zero coupon bonds one with a very high with a very high maturity and let's say both have a par value of uh, both have a par value of 100 now initially say interest rate is equal to 8% so the value of bond A given a par value of 100 would be 100 over 1.08 to the power of 10 and the value of bond B would be 100 over 1.08 we are assuming that an 8% rate applies to both A and B now if interest rates go up to 9% then the value of bond A will fall to 100 over 1.09 to the power of 10 versus this will simply fall to 100 over 1.09 now I want you to do the calculations and you will notice that the percentage fall in price for bond A is considerably more than the percentage fall in price for bond B so that explains that the longer the maturity the higher the interest rate risk next higher coupon payments higher the coupon payments lower the interest rate risk the way you can think of this is as follows now say you have two bonds c and d and let's say that for c the coupon rate is high whereas for d the coupon rate is low when you have a high coupon rate that means you are getting more of your money back faster and since you are getting your money back faster or sooner with bond C the interest rate risk is lower higher yields so again what you can look at here is understand this using the price yield curve and I will draw this again for your benefit price on the y axis yield on the x axis notice that the price yield curve looks something like this notice also that let's say that this is the high yield area this is the low yield area so if a given bond is in the high yield space 
then the interest rate risk or the change in price for a given change in yield is relatively low so in the high yield area the interest rate risk is low whereas in the low yield area the interest rate risk is high so in the low yield area a rise in interest rate over here will cause a big decrease in price versus in this area a small a similar increase in yield causes a small decrease in price so that explains the high yield point next call option as we discussed on the previous slide when we have a call option then the interest rate risk is lower relative to a bond without the call option and similarly with a put option also very briefly i'll draw the curve for a put option also let's say that this is your price yield curve for a regular bond and let's say that there is a put option at 99 so if there is a put option at 99 this means that the investor can sell the bond back to the issuer for 99 so that puts a floor of 99 on the price of the bond and the curve the price yield curve for a bond with a put option then looks something like this so it will look something like this here again see that the slope of this bond which is the bond with a put option is generally less than the slope of the option free bond hence we can say that for a bond with a put option the interest rate risk is lower than a similar bond without the put option floating rate securities so what is the interest rate risk with floating rate securities and just as a quick refresher with a floating floating rate security a coupon is periodically reset based on a reference rate now before coming to the bottom line i will just explain the concept of interest rate risk with regards to floating rate securities by comparing two very simple securities one a floating rate and another a straight or uh, another a, a straight bond with a fixed coupon rate a fixed rate bond let's say you have a fixed rate bond which is a annual bond and it's a four year bond which makes a fixed coupon payment of 10 10 10 and then 10 at the end plus 100 par value back let's say that the interest rate initially was 10% so the value of the bond initially was par which is 100 so this is your fixed rate bond versus let's take another bond which is also a four year bond but this is a floating rate so this is a a floater which is based on some benchmark let's say something like libor plus a 2% spread and let's also say that when we start out this overall floating rate libor plus 2% is equal to 10% assume uh, <coughs> so the price of this floating rate security initially will also be uh, so the value or the price initially is 100 and with the floating rate security the next coupon payment is decided based on the interest rate at the beginning of the period so in this case if the interest rate at the beginning of the period libor is 8% plus the 2% spread over libor gives us 10% so we know that our first coupon is going to be 10 we don't know what the subsequent coupons will be because this coupon payment number 2 will be decided when we know the interest rate at the start of the period so at this point these coupon payments are not known now what happens to both these bonds when interest rates go up let's take the simpler case when interest rates go up then let's say as you come close to this first coupon payment let's say that interest rates have gone up to 11% then the value of this bond say just before the first coupon is paid will obviously come down because the value of this bond will now be based on a discount rate of 11% so we are discounting these fixed future cash flows at a higher rate 
hence the value of the fixed rate comes down and in fact if interest rates keep going up then the value of the bond keeps coming down because the payments we are receiving in the future are fixed so the way you can think of it going back to the price yield curve for a fixed rate bond or a fixed coupon rate bond as the yield or interest rates keep increasing the price keeps falling now the situation of a floater is different and the way you can think of it is if the value i'll just explain how the value changes with interest rates and then and then try to explain why the way you can think of it is let's say that initially the value is 100 so if we again draw the price yield for the floating rate security if the initial par value is 100 and interest rates start going up so remember the only thing fixed right now at time zero is the first coupon payment so if interest rates go up the bond value will start going down but at the time of the first reset date which in my example is end of year one our value of the bond will be back at par so here i'm assuming rather simplistically that this spread is not changing and let's say that the only thing that's changing is LIBOR so over the first period LIBOR has gone from 8% to 9% so notice that as we come to period 1 the value of the bond will be back to 100 why? because if you remember the basic formula for valuation of a bond we have to use now a discount rate of 9% but if interest rates have gone up to 9% that means that our coupon payments have also gone up so not only is our discount rate up but our cash flows which are tied to the floating rate have also gone up and in essence at the reset date we will be back at par now we don't need to get into too much details but as long as this spread doesn't change then the value or the price of the bond can go down between reset dates but on reset dates the price of the bond will come back to par hence is there any interest rate risk the answer is yes there is some interest rate risk between reset dates but clearly the interest rate risk for a floating rate security is less than the interest rate risk for a regular fixed coupon rate security so that then makes this point obvious and one you should know that interest rate there is interest rate risk between reset dates and again i'll repeat uh, the the interest rate risk is there but it is less than the interest rate risk for a fixed coupon rate security now in my example i assume that this spread of 2% does not change but let's say that the credit worthiness of this issuer goes down uh, so if that happens then this spread will go up if the spread goes up then it is possible uh, then in fact the price of the bond will be less than par value at reset dates so how do we measure interest rate risk we use a measure called duration which again is covered in a lot more detail in a later reading but here very briefly duration is the approximate percentage price change so note that this is a percentage price change for a 1% change in yield and so this is the interpretation what this is saying is for a given bond if a 1% change in yield leads to a 3% decrease in price then we can say that the duration is 3 uh, sometimes it's written as a negative number to highlight the fact that a 1% change in yield causes a 3% decrease in price this remember is a approximate measure the formula for duration which is given here but covered in more detail in a later reading is equal to the price with a yield decline minus price with yield increase over 2 into initial price into a decimal change in yield so very briefly what this means is as follows so let's say you are looking at a bond portfolio with this price yield curve initially let's say that the bond is 
is priced at par value 100 with a yield of 8% and what this is saying is if we increase the yield by 50 basis points or 0.5% to 8.5 let's say that the price of the bond becomes 99 so at 8.5 the price is 99 and let's say if we bring the yield down to 7.5 then let's say that the price here is 102 so plugging into this formula the price with a yield decline so when we declined to 7.5 which is this point over here the price became 102 minus the price with a yield increase which is 99 divided by 2 times the initial price which is 100 multiplied by the decimal change which is so in percentage terms the change was 0.5 percent in decimal terms it would be 0.005 so you have 2 into 100 into 0.005 you do the maths and you should get a duration of 3 so what is the price impact of a yield change if you've calculated the duration of a bond or a bond portfolio and let's say you have a duration of 8 what if the yield goes up by only 0.25 percent or 25 basis points by how much will the price go down and the answer is pretty straightforward remember the duration of 8 meant that uh, a 1 percent increase in yield means a 8 percent decrease in the price of the bond so a 0.25 percent increase in the yield means that the price of the bond will go down by 8 multiplied by 0 0.25 which is equal to 2 percent so if the yield goes up by 0.25 percent we can say that the price of the bond will go down by approximately 2 percent so duration allows us to figure out the change in price in percentage terms obviously if your bond has a, as in your bond will have a certain value so if you have the value of your bond or you have the value of your bond portfolio then the there is a concept called dollar duration of a bond or dollar duration of a bond portfolio so if your portfolio is worth 100 million then what does this number mean then the dollar duration would simply be what is the change in value for a 1% change in yield so if you know that for your portfolio the duration is equal to 8 then what is the dollar duration the way you can see this is a 1% change in yield means uh, approximately a 8% decrease in price here since I have used a nice round number of 100 million for the total value of my bond portfolio I can say that my dollar duration is is 8 million dollars why because 8 percent of my bond portfolio value is simply 8 million so dollar duration is simply a metric for a given portfolio of a given size and the number is expressed in dollar terms rather than percentage terms duration and yield curve risk so let me first make a general statement which is as follows portfolio duration is a approximation of the price sensitivity of a portfolio to a parallel shift of the yield curve now there is a reading on yield curves that comes later but since the yield curve is mentioned here I will explain it very briefly uh, a yield curve simply shows the yield on the y-axis and the maturity on the x-axis so the way we plot a yield curve is we, we take bonds with say a maturity of one year and figure out what the yield is let's say the yield is five percent then you take bonds with maturity of two years let's say the yield there is six percent and then three year bonds the yield there might be six point five percent and so on so you take bonds of different maturities and then plot their yield to maturity or YTM and the line that you get is a yield curve now 
when we talk about the duration measure if you recall we used a formula called uh, which which looked as followed so we said duration is equal to the value of the bond or, or, or the bond or the bond portfolio when interest rates go down minus the value of the bond when interest rates go up divided by 2 into the original value of the bond into delta y or the change in yield so if you have a bond portfolio with three different bonds so bond one has a one year maturity bond two has a five year maturity and bond three has a let's say a 20 year maturity just to make it extreme so this duration measure when you say that interest rates are changing by say 50 basis points it simply assumes that the interest rates across the board from one year to five year to 20 year 20 years this simplistic duration measure assumes that all yields across your maturity time horizon have changed by 50 basis points so this clearly is a simplifying assumption and research has shown that while it is a simplifying assumption it is not a bad assumption so it explains uh, probably 90 percent of changes in the yield curve are explained by the parallel component of the shift but to illustrate this yield curve risk the point is this sometimes the shift in yield curve is not parallel so if this is your original yield curve what is possible is you have a yield curve so if this is your yield curve one your original yield curve it is possible that you have a shift like this where there is a big increase in yield of short term securities but the yield of long term securities has not changed as much so this is just one example of a non parallel shift in the yield curve and the point is this when you have a non parallel shift in yield curve duration measure does not fully explain this whole shift it does not explain the impact of the non parallel component of the shift and the impact of the non parallel component of the yield curve shift is called yield curve risk and currently at level one this is all you need to memorize in terms of yield curve risk when we when we meet in level two then um, this matter will be discussed in more detail